Welcome to basic flight, systems, and weapon training. This series of training sessions will provide you with detailed instructions on how to control your spacecraft, manage ship systems, navigate, trade, and use weapons. You can skip any training stage by pressing Enter. You can also return to a previous training stage by pressing Alt-Enter. For this first session, we'll cover flight basics. The default flight control will be set to the mouse if no joystick or gamepad is detected. You can change the control setup as desired in the options menu. For mouse control, you can select either a pointer mode or a direction mode. The pointer mode will let you control your ship with a visual marker on the screen. The direction mode will let you control your ship based on how much you move the mouse. Let's start with velocity control. If you're using the mouse for flight control, you can use the wheel to adjust the velocity setting or the 1 to 0 keys to set it by percentage. Plus and minus, or W and S, can also be used to trim the velocity setting. You'll notice that the EL indicator will reflect whatever level of velocity you select. Increase your velocity setting to maximum now. Reduce your velocity to zero. If you're using the mouse or keyboard flight control, you can hit the backspace key to immediately set velocity to zero. In addition to your main engine, your ship also has a series of thrusters at various points on the hull. These thrusters are automatically controlled by your onboard computer to help keep your ship moving in the direction it is facing. But you also manually control the thrusters to rotate your ship and perform maneuvers. Use the flight control device to turn left and right now. Next, pitch up and down. Good. The last rotation control is roll. For keyboard and mouse flight control, use the default Q and E keys for rolling left and right. Roll left and right now. In addition to rotation and velocity control, you can also move your ship directly up, down, left, or right by activating the horizontal or vertical movement thrusters. On-off control for these thrusters is available using the default A and D keys for left-right horizontal movement, while the Z and X keys are used for up-down vertical movement. You can also add variable horizontal and vertical thruster control if the flight control device you're using supports enough axis channels. Try moving horizontally left and right now. Now try moving up and down. Flying in space involves mastering the effects of inertia. The Inertial Dampening System, or IDS, will help keep flight control simple by constantly using your thrusters automatically to keep your ship moving in the direction it's facing. The more momentum your ship has in a particular direction, the longer it will take for the IDS to alter your ship's movement toward a new heading. When you want to bypass the system and allow your ship to continue moving in a certain direction, press the IDS on-off key, default spacebar. The inertial label will be visible on your ship's status display when the IDS is off. Practice by building up speed in the direction you're facing, then turn off the IDS and rotate around a bit to see how inertia will let you continue moving in the original direction. Turn the IDS back on to resume automatic thruster control. Your ship is also equipped with an afterburner, which provides a high level of thrust from the main engine. Use it sparingly, as it consumes a much greater amount of fuel, but it can be very useful in combat when you need to escape or change direction quickly. To engage the afterburner, press and hold the default tab key. Practice using the afterburner now by accelerating to twice your ship's maximum cruise speed, then release the key to disable the afterburner.
Your ship divides available power between your weapon system and shield system. The current power setting is shown on the lower left cockpit display at the top right corner next to the letter P. The setting will range from a value of negative 5 to positive 5. The S readout is for shields and the W readout is for weapons. You can adjust power for each system by using the default left and right bracket keys. Increasing power to a system will improve its recharge rate and effectiveness providing more resistance for shields or more shots for primary weapons. Managing power between these systems will become very important as you start upgrading your weapons and shield systems. Just to the left of the power setting indicator is the number of remaining countermeasures you have, CM. Below the power setting indicator is a blue bar next to the letter W, which indicates the weapon system power level. The bar will decrease in size as you fire your primary weapons. Once the bar reaches the middle, your weapon system will be out of power and will need to recharge. Observe this in action now by firing your primary weapon until the bar indicates a low power level. Good. Notice that a red energy light flashes on your HUD to bring the low power level to your attention. Below the weapon power level, the green bar next to the letter H indicates the status of your ship's hull. It will decrease in size as your ship sustains hull damage. The armor of your ship that comprises its hull is determined by the frame you choose when you build it. On the left side of the ship's status display are readouts for velocity, set velocity, gravity, altitude, inertial status, fuel, navigation damage, weapon system damage, engine damage, shield array status, and primary firing mode. Your secondary weapons are listed on the lower right side of the display, and the weapon next to the number one is the weapon that's ready to fire. The middle cockpit display is your 3D radar. It provides direction information on objects in space. Green dots indicate friendly ships, yellow dots indicate moderate ships, and red dots indicate hostile ships. When red dots appear on the radar, a warning sound will help bring the threat to your attention. Blue dots indicate stations, yellow dots with small brackets indicate inbound missiles, white dots indicate cargo, and purple dots indicate unknown or miscellaneous objects. The dots include an attached line that points away from the center of the radar sphere, which helps you determine if an object is behind or ahead of you. The blue highlight brackets in the middle indicate the front of your ship, so you can fly toward an object by bringing its corresponding dot into the brackets. Directly above the 3D radar are the vertical and horizontal speed gauges. The display at the lower right of the cockpit shows details about the ship you are currently targeting. To target a ship, simply use the mouse pointer to click on it when it's in your visual range. You can toggle between ships in the area with the default T key, or use the default R key to target the closest ship. Alt-T will toggle between hostile ships in the area, while Alt-R will target the nearest hostile ship. Once you've targeted a ship, its class, faction affiliation, threat level, speed, range, shield levels, direction, and hull damage will be shown on the display. If you've installed a cargo scanning device on your ship, you'll also see what's in the targeted ship's cargo bay once you're in range. The center of the HUD is your gun sight. The outer rim of the gun sight indicates the limit of where you can obtain a missile lock and have your primary weapons automatically aim at a target. Primary weapons use the Multidirectional Tracking System, or MDTS, to automatically lead a target based on speed, distance, and direction. The target must be in range and within the outer rim of the gun sight for the weapons to hit successfully. The farther away a target is, the more time it will have to evade the gunfire. If you want to aim manually, you can press the default L key to turn the MDTS off. A missile lock is obtained by keeping a target ship inside the outer rim of the gun sight for a certain period of time. The range and time it takes to obtain a lock will depend on which secondary weapon is being used. Some secondary weapon types, such as fulcrum torpedoes, don't require a missile lock and just fly in a straight line. You can toggle between secondary weapons in flight by pressing the default semicolon and apostrophe keys. 
Practice firing at this drone target, marked as a red threat level, until it's destroyed. most effective against hull armor. Each type of particle cannon can have unique range, yield, and firing rate attributes. Some particle cannons are also optimized to deplete shields, drain energy, or inflict kinetic effects on a target. So review the specifications of each cannon you install so you understand how to best use it. Beam cannons are the other type of primary weapon. They are generally a shield depletion weapon, and higher class models that use more power are more effective. You can selectively fire each type of weapon individually or simultaneously by changing the fire mode, default end key. When a missile is fired at you, you can choose to evade or attempt to shoot it down. Missile evasion is an important skill to master. Most missiles track your heat signature, and in the cold void of space, your ship's engine and thruster exhaust stand out. You can significantly reduce your ship's heat signature by turning off the IDS and avoid using the afterburner or manually controlling the maneuvering thrusters. While drifting in space this way, your countermeasures can be more effective. Wait to launch countermeasures until the missile is close enough to set off the proximity alarm. One of the most important aspects of handling your ship in combat is shield management. Your shield system projects a defensive field of energy in four directions. Each direction is referred to as an array. If one or more arrays becomes weak, enemy fire can hit the hull of your ship directly, causing damage. As mentioned earlier, the status of each array is indicated on the shield section of your ship's status display. Notice the green bars, one for each direction with your ship in the middle. Watch as I drop your front shield array to critical. The green bar changes color to red and decreases in size. As it recharges, the color will change to yellow and green again. Your goal is to avoid letting any array reach critical. To do that, you can transfer power from the other arrays. Let's practice that now. I will again drop your front shield to critical. When that happens, use the Augment Front Shield key, default numpad 8, to transfer power from the left, right, and rear arrays to the front array. Good. In addition